What is library in Sorty? Most of you guys have found different libraries in different smart contracts. If you talk about Open Zeppelin, if you talk about Unisoft, they have libraries in their contract and they're using in their smart contract. Then how are we going to create and how we can initialize the library? And that's what we're going to learn in this video that how you can create library and how you can use that library in the contract. Let's provide the general configuration. We have to provide the Pragma Sorty version. And now we're going to create a library. So to create a library, you have to use the keyword library and you can call whatever you want to the name. So I'll call it math because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to perform certain calculation in the library. So let's create a block in that we're going to create a function. We'll call it square unt it will take a y it will run internal pure return it's going to return the z and that's a very common practice in the library when it's come to solid smart contract you want to perform certain mathematical calculation to prevent any kind of hack take this if statement and in this we'll say that if y is greater than 3 then we want to do this and that we're going to say z is equal to y simple and we're going to take this x variable and we're going to assign and we'll take a unt variable x and we're going to assign the variable to that we're going to say y divide by that plus one we'll run a while loop it will say x is smaller than z in that scenario we can simply take the z and make it equal to x here we're going to define the x and we're going to assign y divide by x plus x one by two that's the simple library function we have here now we're going to write the else block and then we're going to check for a condition y is not equal to zero and in that we're going to update the z value of z and we're going to perform the certain calculations so else z by default the value of z is going to be zero because it's a uat type and this is the simple library we had created what we are doing we are assigning a couple of variables checking for a condition running a while loop and making variables so we can utilize it into the contract so let's come here let's create a contract and we're going to use this library in this contract test math we'll come here we're going to take this function we'll say test wire root and that we're going to pass the unt x public pure return and it's going to return the unt inside that we're going to return this math dot square because this is math is the library which we are using and we are calling this square function and in that we have to pass the data which is the x and this will return the calculation entire calculation which is happening that's a very simple function. Let's me give this comment. Array function to delete element at index and reorganize the array. And we have already talked about the deleting array in Solity that when you delete any element into an array, it will leave a blank space. It will make the value of that particular element which you want to delete to zero. And there is no changes in the length, but we want to make the change in the length once we delete any element. And that's what I have mentioned here. This is the problem we have in Sorty when it's come to array deleting an element. So now we're going to create a library. That library will delete the element and it will also change the length. So if there is a 10 element, if we delete one, it, the length would be, let's create a library for that. So we'll say library array. And that we go to create a function will cause say remove unt because we have to reset the array storage area, unt index and public. Can you guess why we have used this storage keyword because we are directly manipulating our state variable and we have to pipe the index and that will say now we're going to remove the last element whichever element we want to delete we want to shift that element to the last and we're going to delete it from there if you still have any confusion about shifting the array make sure to watch the array section and that we have talked about in detail that how you can shift the array and delete it and you can change the length as well here we have it now let's come here we we'll say require dot length should be greater than zero if it's not then we have to throw this error message can't remove from an empty array and that we're going to take the array we're going to pass the index so we can easily able to identify that which array we want to remove and here we're going to call this array dot length and we're going to shift that to the end so we have to subtract that as you all know that array start from the zero index so that's what we are getting minus one so we can get the last one so that's what we are doing here we are shifting and then we're going to simply call this pop method to delete the last element simple javascript and that's our library so this is the library we have designed now we're going to use it in the contract to delete so let's create a contract we're going to set a test array and that we're going to take this using array because we have to initialize the library by using this using keyword which is there in the solidity and we're going to say the for unt so we have to define the type that what type it is it's a unt Let's take the unt public array. This is going to be our array. We're going to create a function. We'll say test array remove 
public inside that we're going to create this for loop we'll say unt i is zero then i is greater than three then we have to simply increment that so we got our loop inside that we're going to simply call this method array dot in that we have to simply pass the i the element inside the array we can come here we can simply say array dot remove one the method and we have to simply check for the length that view we have the two length or not then we have to simply check the data that what data we have in what location so check the one is two and that's it that's the entire smart contract that how you can build a library and how you can test it and how you can utilize it so hope this makes sense to all of you now we're going to test this out in the Remix id this is the entire smart contract we have written to understand the library concept in salty so we, this is the first library we have declared this is the test math contract and this is the second library in which we are checking for the array length and this is the last contract test array and that we are utilizing the library so let's deploy the contract let's come here we're going to deploy the first contract and deploy the math contract do the transaction it's went and let's call this first one test math contract and in then we're going to deploy that one here we have the contract let's come here if you call this math library you can see we have nothing here because it's just a library but we have something in here let's close this one we have something in here we can completely come here and here we need to pass a data so what it takes is take a unt which is an x and it will perform all this calculation because we are using this square library so if we come here if we pass less five if i make a request the entire calculation will happen and i will get this two back so first it will take this y then it will check that y is bigger than three is not because we have provided this two provide this five yes it's bigger than y so if we have provided this fives yes it's bigger than three then it will execute this update the value of the z and thus it will do the calculation run the while loop and do the performance of this and finally it's going to return that the default value is going to be zero of unit unt type and that's what i have mentioned so it's working fine you can see we got an output you no matter what you passed if you pass this 352 if you make a call and you can see this is the seven you will get so this is the square root of that square root functions and that's looking fine to me now let's test this out contract so let's come here we're gonna come to this we have to some play so this is the library we have declared let's deploy that one so we got deployed now let's come here we have to test the array one and if i come here right now we don't have anything so let's test and call this contract the transaction when successful and here we have the contract and that we have this two function so if we call this test array so if you come here you can see this is the array we have declared right now we don't have anything into that if i call that one i'll get an empty which is not there nothing now here i have this test array and remove array so right now you can see that we are updating our array we have three element into that so when we call this function it will run this for loop and it's going to update our array this one so let's call this function and here you can see the transaction when successful and if you call this one you will get the length so we have zero so because initial value is zero if you pass this i not i sorry one you will get this the value is two so this for loop is working fine and the transaction went successful because we run the for loop we add three element into our array after that we remove the first element which is a two so right now you can see right now we have if i pass this zero call this i'll get a zero but if i pass this one we are getting this two but by default we need to get one because here we are calling this remove function so it's removing the first when this loop will run it will start from zero then it will become one then it will become two if i call this two what i will get i'll get nothing because we have only two element and this remove function is working fine and we have also confirming here that the length is two after deleting so this library which we have used we have created this error library is working fine it's giving us the actual length of an array after deleting hope this makes sense that how the library work these are the simple library we have created to understand the entire concept of library and removing so if you still have any confusion any doubt make sure to watch this code again retype change with the value and try to understand that what exactly happening and what we are exactly doing with that said let's move to the next video